Association of American Medical Colleges is pleased to welcome you to today's ARES and NRMP Offer SOAP 101 webinar. We are recording and we'll make the archive available afterwards. We will email you once we post it. We did mute all participant audio. If you need help, please send us a message. The presentation includes time for Q&A. You may submit a question at any time by clicking the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. To access the resources, including the slides, please click on the handouts tab where you logged in today. We'll also post a link in the chat. It's now my pleasure to welcome Jeanette Kelly, Chief of Match Operations with NRMP, and Laurel Constantine, Senior Aeros Training Specialist with the AAMC. Laurel, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Welcome, everyone. I'll start by outlining the goal and agenda for today. The purpose of today's webinar is to introduce you to the SOAP 2024 schedule and process. We'll start the webinar with Jeanette covering what is SOAP, as well as SOAP eligibility and communications during SOAP, followed by myself covering process and preparation of my heiress for SOAP. And lastly, Jeanette will wrap things up with the SOAP process as well as some data too. We will have a Q&A at the end, please feel free to share questions through the Q&A panel. With all of that said and our housekeeping items out of the way, it is my absolute pleasure to turn it over to the NRMP's Chief of Match Operations, Jeanette Cowley. Jeanette? Good afternoon. Let me add my welcome and thanks for joining us in this webinar. In this first portion of the presentation, I'm going to give an overview of SOAP, discuss the rules that apply to communication, as well as show you how to access the list of unfilled programs. The Match Week Supplemental Offer and Acceptance Program, or SOAP, is the process for offering positions that are unfilled after the match has been run to eligible, unmatched, and partially unmatched applicants. NRMP manages SOAP in our Registration Ranking and Results, or R3, system. The AMC partners with us in the SOAP process to deliver applications through ARIS. NRMP and ARIS are separate organizations and systems, so it's important to understand what parts of the process happen in NRMP versus ARIS, and we're going to cover that today. Because SOAP is an offer and acceptance program, applicants do not enter a rank order or preference list during SOAP. Applicants view the list of unfilled programs in the interim PR3 system, decide which programs they want to apply to. They then log into ARIS to apply. After applying to programs, applicants may be contacted by programs to conduct video or phone interviews. And then on Thursday of match week, a series of four offer rounds occur where programs extend offers to applicants through the interim PR3 system. But don't worry, we're going to go into much more detail of the whole process. Again, SOAP is not another match, and applicants do not enter a rank or preference list for SOAP. But as with positions in the match, positions offered and accepted during SOAP do establish a binding commitment between the program and the applicant. In preparation for match week, you might want to review the video and support resources we have available on the NRMP website at www.nrmp.org. Once the SOAP process begins, it's pretty fast paced, so there may not be adequate time for you to learn and understand the process. So we're happy you're here. Let's review eligibility to participate in the SOAP process. There are three parts to being eligible, and we'll take them one at a time. To participate in SOAP, first, you must already have registered for the 2024 main residency match in the interim P system. Remember, interim P and ARIS are separate organizations and systems. So if you're not already registered with the NRMP, you can't participate in SOAP. That registration deadline was February 28th, and unfortunately there is no late registration or separate registration for SOAP. Unfortunately, there are just no exceptions to that. Second, you must be verified as eligible to enter graduate medical education on July 1st, 2024. For IMGs, credentials have been verified by the ECFMG and they've verified that you've passed the exams required for ECFMG certification and are eligible for any pathways required. For USMD and DO seniors and graduates, as well as Canadians, your medical schools have verified you as eligible in our system. At this point in the match process, you should see your verification status in the NRMP R3 system as verified. If you're not verified in the NRMP system, your rank order list will not be used when the algorithm is processed and you will not be able to participate in SOAP. Finally, to participate in SOAP, you must be fully or partially unmatched. The question we usually get here is, what does it mean to be partially unmatched? Applicants who rank advanced and or preliminary programs 
who do not match to one or the other types are considered partially unmatched. So, for instance, if you match to an advanced program, but not a preliminary program, you're considered partially unmatched because you don't have a full course of training. We're going to cover this more in a moment when we discuss the list of unfilled programs. If you only ranked categorical programs, you cannot be partially unmatched since those positions provide the full training required for specialty board certification. On Monday of match week, when match status results are released, your SOAP eligibility will display along with your match status. In addition to understanding your eligibility and how SOAP works, there are some very specific and strict communication and application rules that must be adhered to during SOAP. These rules are in place to keep the process as fair as possible for all applicants. If, you if you've been verified as eligible to participate in the match in SOAP and find out on Monday, March 11th, that you did not match or are partially unmatched, you will be able to access the list of unfilled programs in the NRMP system. I'll show you where to access the list in just a moment. If you're partially unmatched, you will only be able to access positions for which you're eligible. So what that means, to use our previous example, is if you match to an advanced position and not a preliminary position, you'll only have access to preliminary positions on the list of unfilled programs. If you match to only a preliminary position, you'll only have access to advanced positions on the list. During SOAP, you can only apply to unfilled positions that are participating in SOAP. Match participating programs that are not participating in SOAP, as well as programs just not in the match, cannot be contacted by any means until after SOAP concludes. And most important of all the communication rules, other than sending an application, no other communication or reaching out to programs is allowed by you or anyone on your behalf. You can only apply through ARIS or the application service required by the program and then wait for the programs to reach out to you based on your application. Truly, there can be no contacting programs until the program initiates contact with you. That includes your mentor reaching out to someone they know or your uncle's cardiologist calling a program for you. Those are all against the rules. Programs do regularly report these violations to us, so don't get yourself in trouble by contacting programs until they contact you. Once a program initiates contact with you, then you can reach out to them however you choose. For applicants who are not SOAP eligible, in other words, you weren't verified as eligible to participate in the match, you will not have access to the list of unfilled programs, and you cannot apply to or contact any match participating programs until SOAP concludes. NRMP also offers a SOAP participation exception. This exception allows fully unmatched applicants who wish to refrain from participating in SOAP and who want to pursue interests outside of clinical residency training, so things like research or master's academic program, to pursue those opportunities instead of participating in SOAP. Unmatched applicants can pursue this option if, one, the position is not affiliated with a match or SOAP participating residency program, Two, the position does not qualify for training credit in an ACGME accredited residency program. And three, the applicant does not submit any applications to SOAP participating programs during match week. For the avoidance of doubt, if this option is one you intend to take, you or your advocates may not contact SOAP participating programs for the purpose of discussing or seeking a clinical training position until the conclusion of SOAP. So let's talk about what will happen on Monday of match week. On Monday, March 11th at 10 a.m., you'll find out if you matched. An email will be sent, although once it leaves our servers, we cannot guarantee you're going to get it. You can view whether you matched in the R3 system. To assist in SOAP efforts, partially unmatched applicants and couple applicants whose partner did not match will be able to have the city state and zip code of their match program provided to them along with their match status and that will be in the R3 system. So in past years, those applicants had to call the NRMP to get this information, but now it's available immediately on your match homepage. This is to assist applicants who are partially unmatched or coupled applicants whose partner matched and they didn't search for a complementary position in SOAP. Keep in mind, applicants who are fully matched will not have any location information provided to them until match day. And no, unfortunately, we cannot provide it over the phone either. Fully matched applicants will find out where they matched on Friday, March 15th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. So that's on match day. So you do have to wait. I'm sorry. 
If you are unmatched or partially unmatched, you will have access to the list of unfilled programs in the NRMP system, and that's also at 10 a.m., and then be able to begin applying to SOAP programs in ARIS beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The biggest thing to remember is that on Monday, you'll be using both the systems of NRMP and ARIS. NRMP provides that match status and the unfilled programs list, and ARIS provides the application. Let's take a look at where you'll view your match status and the list of unfilled programs. Upon logging into the NRMP R3 system at 10 a.m. on Monday of Match Week, you'll be directed to your match homepage, which displays your match status. That's that text in the yellow box. If you're partially unmatched, this is also where you're going to see that location information for your matched program. Again, applicants who are fully matched will not see any location information for where you matched. You'll also see your SOAP status in the lower right corner of the green applicant information section of the screen. Clicking on the SOAP link in the top menu bar includes a link to the list of unfilled programs and a link to SOAP offers. When you click on the unfilled list link, the unfilled list will display with link specialties and position types, along with the number of unfilled programs and positions. You can then click on the specialty and position type in which you're interested to view the unfilled programs and how many positions are currently unfilled in each. Remember, applicants who are fully unmatched can view every specialty and position type, but applicants who are partially unmatched can view only those positions for which they're eligible. You'll then head on over to ARIS to apply to programs. No other communication with programs is allowed. Now I'm going to turn things back over to Laurel from ARIS to show you how to apply to programs during SOAP. Thank you, Jeanette. I'll be going over the electronic residency application service experience in NRMP SOAP. My goal for this segment is to familiarize attendees with the ARIS system and the My ARIS application process during SOAP in order for applicants to prepare their application materials as well as have a better understanding of the experience ahead of SOAP. To start, ARIS is an AAMC service designated to streamline the residency application process. For those of you who have applied during the regular season, the residency application process in ARIS during SOAP will be familiar. So what are the options for preparing in My ARIS for SOAP? There are several action items applicants can complete ahead of time to set up for a smoother experience in My ARIS during SOAP. These pre-SOAP tasks are highlighted in the SOAP 2024 checklist available on the ARIS for Applicants website. Before SOAP, Make sure that you're able to log into your AAMC account and access My ARIS. Should you not remember your password, use the Forget Username Password option, or if you encounter any difficulties, contact the AAMC Support Center ahead of time to report and resolve these issues. Additionally, if an applicant has not yet done so for the ARIS 2024 season, they will need to certify and submit their My ARIS application prior to applying to programs during SOAP. This will finalize their application in preparation for the condensed timeline of SOAP. Keep in mind that the application cannot be edited once it has been certified and submitted, with the exception of the personal information section. Please remember to keep that section updated, particularly with your NRMP ID, as any information changes. Additionally, Applicants have the option to upload new or updated supporting documents for their application. I'll go through each document type and how these updates will work prior to and during SOAP. The process is nearly identical to the regular season. For all applicants, in terms of the medical school transcript, medical student performance evaluation, or letters of recommendation, once these are uploaded by your respective dean's office or authors, they will then appear in the Applicants My ARIS Documents tab for assignment. Applicants may request the release of any new or updated USMLE or Comlex USA transcripts. These transmissions typically take less than a couple of hours during normal business hours. However, before and throughout SOAP, our business partners at the NBME, NBOME, and ECFMG make a concerted effort to turn these requests around as quickly as possible. Applicants can also update or add their photo and personal statements. If applicants have already certified and submitted their application for the ARIS 2024 season, 
The personal statement is a good place to include new or updated developments or information the applicant would like to share with the program. I'll talk about the process of assigning each of these documents later in the presentation. To apply to programs during SOAP, there are a couple of key requirements in ARIS. Of course, as Jeanette mentioned, applicants must be SOAP eligible. In ARIS, applicants must have certified and submitted their My ARIS application prior to submitting applications to eligible and available programs during SOAP. For those who apply during the regular ARIS 2024 season, this step is complete. For those who did not complete this during the regular ARIS 2024 season, you can go to the My ARIS application to certify and submit. As a part of this process, ARIS often gets asked about fees during SOAP. If an applicant has applied to at least one residency program during the ARIS 2024 season by 7.30 a.m. on Monday, March 11th, there is no fee to participate in SOAP. If an applicant has not applied to at least one program prior to SOAP and is SOAP eligible, they will have to pay the ARIS base fee of $99 to participate. If an applicant has not sent their USMLE or Comlex USA transcripts for the ARIS 2024 season, a fee of $80 per transcript type will apply, meaning the fee is assessed once per season at the time of first request. For full information on the regular season application fee structure, you may visit the ARIS for Applicants link provided in the link section of this webinar. All SOAP applicants have a 45 application maximum to use as they wish throughout SOAP. The 45 application maximum includes all programs that the applicant applies to during SOAP. Those 45 applications include any programs to which the applicant is reapplying, for example, if an applicant reapplies to 10 programs they apply to during the regular season, they now have 35 remaining for additional applications. These can be tracked in various places that I will highlight in the upcoming slides. Please note applicants cannot withdraw an application after it has been submitted. I've covered applicant preparations in my eras prior to SOAP, explain fees during SOAP, Let's talk about navigating the My ARIS application during SOAP. This is the general map or technical order for applying to programs in My ARIS during SOAP. Don't worry, I'll break it down further in the next few slides. But the start is to review the NRMP's list of unfilled programs as Jeanette described earlier. Side note here, just keep in mind the 45 application maximum when you are reviewing those programs. When they are ready, applicants will navigate to My ARIS and log into their AAMC account. And from there, applicants can search for programs through the Programs tab, select Training Track or Tracks of Interest, Save Programs, Submit Applications, and Assign Documents. The next few slides are going to break this process down a bit more. Keep in mind that these slide images that I'm showing are simply examples from a demoing environment they may not reflect your experience exactly. On Monday, March 11th, my ARIS is closed from 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, upon logging into the my ARIS application on Monday, March 11th, when SOAP begins at 11 a.m., you will see the SOAP header in the dashboard. The applicant SOAP eligibility is listed at the top in the header and information on SOAP is provided here for the applicant based on their eligibility, along with some rudimentary information about SOAP. Starting with the Programs tab, this is one of the central stops during the SOAP process. This is where applicants can search for programs, view saved programs and programs applied to, or reapply to programs they applied to during the regular season. When Search Program is selected, the page shown here appears, given the option to search for a program by accreditation ID or specialty. Applicants can use either method depending on the level of specificity. Next, any search result will come up on this page where programs can be selected and saved. Note that only programs with available positions and for which the applicant is eligible will appear in the results during SOAP. These results can be filtered as usual. 
In the top left corner, applicants can see how many applications of the 45 maximum have been used. In the bottom left column, Note that this falls under the Search Program tab for Navigation. The box towards the center of the page labeled Eligible for Reapply shows applicants if they are eligible to reapply to a specific program. A quick way to view the programs an applicant is eligible to reapply to is to click the blue link in the center of the page labeled Reapply to Programs. Once new and or reapply programs and tracks are identified, check the box next to that program and click the green Save All Selected button to mark them as saved. Once all desired programs have been identified and saved, applicants can move down the left navigation list to save programs. During SOAP, focus on the top box labeled SOAP Programs in the green header. Notice that for SOAP eligible applicants, the non-SOAP programs box has a message letting them know that they can only apply to SOAP programs during this time. There may be leftover saved programs from the regular season in the non-SOAP programs box, and this is okay. You will not be able to take any action on those items during SOAP except delete them. From here, Applicants can either assign documents or go ahead and apply. In the top right corner, applicants can see exactly how many programs have been selected and when ready to apply, clicking the green Apply Preview Invoice button will take applicants to the next screen. Once an applicant selects Apply Preview Invoice, they are brought to this page where they will see any applicable ERAS fees or exam transcript release fees. In this example, the applicant applied to programs during the regular season and already paid their transcript fees earlier in the season, so their total is zero. Before applying to programs, applicants will need to agree to the ARIS payment policy. And to complete the transaction and application submission, the applicant selects the purple continue button on the bottom right. The applicant's remaining number of SOAP applications is displayed there as well. Shifting back to the Reapply to Programs tab, again, applicants may apply to programs they apply to during the regular season if they are eligible and if there is an available position during SOAP. If so, applicants may select the box next to that track and program and then click the green Reapply to Programs button. This will resubmit your application. Programs will already have the applicant's documents from their regular season application, but they may also assign or update some documents to their reapply programs. To reiterate, as you can see there also in the middle, these count towards your 45 SOAP programs maximum. Exactly like the regular application season, applicants would need to assign their application documents to programs. Doing the preparatory work to have these updated and ready to go in MyAris may make for a more seamless process when assigning documents. In the Programs Applied To tab, applicants can take action for one program at a time. Alternatively, applicants can assign documents in bulk through the Documents tab. It's really up to you on which is your preferred method, or you can use a combination if you'd like. In the Additional Documents tab, applicants can view and monitor their USMLE or Comlex USA examination transcripts release status. These transmissions typically take less than a couple of hours during normal business hours, but once again, the NBME, NBOME, and the ECFMG are aware of the necessary expediency during this time and will work to resolve these requests as quickly as possible before and throughout SOAP. Under the Documents tab, applicants will see the three categories of documents listed in the left menu, personal statements, letters of recommendation, and additional documents. I'll go through each and their functions during SOAP. This will look and operate almost identically to the regular application season. For personal statements, any new or updated personal statements may be uploaded here. Once visible in the system, Applicants can take action in assigning these as desired. To do so, click the Assign Action in the Select drop-down menu. When Assign is selected, 
the list of saved and applied programs appears. Under SOAP programs, applicants may click the top checkbox to select all or the individual checkboxes next to each program to assign a personal statement individually. Once selected, the applicant will click assign and the relevant statements will be assigned to the selected program or programs. This screen is a good place to track and verify each program's application status and particular document assignments in the far right columns. Note that programs applied to during the regular season will appear under the bottom header, non-SOAP programs. This is simply for reference and is not actionable during SOAP. Next step in document assignments are letters of recommendation. Any new or updated letters of recommendation may be uploaded by the author through the letter of recommendation portal at any time leading up to or during SOAP. Once submitted, they will appear here in the list of letters available for assignment. For reapply applications, note that applicants cannot unassign or recall a previously submitted letter of recommendation. Also keep in mind the four letter maximum per program through ARIS or adhere to any program specific requirements for letters of recommendation. To assign letters, click the box next to the desired letter and select assign from the select drop down menu. Again, the list of saved and applied programs appears. Here, applicants can check the box next to the SOAP programs to which they'd like to assign that particular letter. Once any or all programs are selected, the applicant will click Assign to complete that part of the process. In the far right columns, applicants can track the status of that program's application and how many letters of recommendation have been assigned. Note again that the non-SOAP programs listed in the bottom section is deactivated during SOAP. The last section under Documents is the Additional Documents tab. From here, applicants can see and track their document statuses. Applicants can also take action on those documents, such as authorizing the release of the USMLE or Comlex USA transcripts and assigning other documents in bulk to program applications. Remember that these documents can be updated and prepared before Match Week and SOAP. For international medical graduates, it's going to look a little different than the example here, but it is still the same as the regular season. Transcript requests should be submitted through the OASIS system and then assigned here in MyAERIS. Resources and questions regarding international medical graduates document transmissions should be directed to Air Support Services at ECFMG. At this point, applicants may complete any applications or document assignments as they wish within the allotted timeline. Following application submissions during rounds, Applicants may receive communications through the MyAERIS Message Center tab. Applicants can connect with their designated dean's office for guidance throughout this process, and should any system concerns or technical issues arise during the process, please contact the AAMC Support Center. This contact information will be shared at the close of the presentation. We've talked about the SOAP participation requirements. Let's go ahead and talk about the schedule. As you can see here, this is an overall view of the week. To not overwhelm you, this document is available as an attachment to this presentation for easy reference. Firstly, ARIS will become inaccessible at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday, March 11th as we prepare for the week of SOAP. Following that, later at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, SOAP eligible applicants may begin applying through my ARIS. Know that MyAERIS, the Letter of Recommendation Portal, and the DWS will be available throughout SOAP for document uploading. And with that, I've concluded the ARIS portion of today's presentation. So at this point, I'll be turning it over to Jeanette for the NRMP details, data, and reminders. Jeanette? Thanks, Laurel. Now let's review how you can view any SOAP offers you may receive. What happens after SOAP? And finally, we're going to take a look at some match and SOAP data from 2023. Let's first discuss what happens after you apply to programs. As Laurel discussed, you have 45 applications, and that's for the entirety of SOAP. Then programs can start reviewing those applications on Tuesday morning. Once programs begin receiving ARIS applications and have a chance to review them, 
usually programs will begin calling the applicants in whom they're interested. That will happen on Tuesday and Wednesday. Programs are reviewing applications and reaching out, usually via phone or email. I know it will be tempting to call programs, especially if you have not gotten any communication as the days wear on. However, to make the process fair for all applicants, it is a violation of SOAP rules to contact programs until they contact you. Throughout Tuesday and Wednesday, applicants should be available for interviews and communication with programs. Keep in mind how programs review applications, contact applicants, and conduct interviews is entirely up to the programs. Some programs are going to be quick about it and some won't. Some will call applicants well into the evening and some early in the morning. Some will set up Zoom or other video interviews and some will do just quick phone interviews. Remember, many of these programs also did not plan to SOAP and so they may be trying to work around clinical schedules or other commitments to participate in SOAP. It's up to them how they vet applicants and decide which applicants will be placed on their preference list. Based on their application review and conversations or interviews with applicants, programs begin making preference lists in the interim piece system, and that brings us to Thursday and the SOAP offer rounds. All SOAP offer rounds will be held on Thursday of match week, that's March 14th. Positions are offered through the R3 system to applicants during these four offer rounds. Each round lasts two hours. The first offer round will begin at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Applicants will receive an email if an offer is extended, but you can view any offers in the R3 system under the SOAP tab, so don't just rely on the email. Offers of positions will only come through the interim piece system, not through ARIS, and no offers or commitments are allowed outside of the R3 system. You can receive multiple offers in any SOAP round, and you'll have two hours in which to accept, reject, or let offers expire. When the first round ends at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, any unaccepted offers will expire, and the list of unfilled programs will be updated with the remaining SOAP positions. NRP is often asked about application strategy for SOAP. It's up to you if you choose to use all your applications prior to the first round of offers being sent out, or if you want to hold some back to apply to any remaining unfilled programs after subsequent rounds. Keep in mind, though, with all four rounds being held on the same day in pretty rapid succession, and most positions filling in the first round, it is questionable whether programs will look at any additional applications. In between rounds, programs can update their preference lists based on the results of the round. Then the next round, round two, begins at 12 p.m., the third round begins at 3 p.m., and the final fourth round begins at 6 p.m. Let's review how the offer rounds work. Remember that the SOAP process differs from the match since there are no rank order lists or an algorithm for this secondary process. Here's how the offer rounds work. Positions are offered to applicants in the order of each program's preference list and according to the number of unfilled positions remaining in the program during each round. For example, a program has two unfilled positions. They submit a preference list, and in the first offer round, two offers go out to the first two people on the program's preference list. If both offers are accepted, the program's filled. Their participation SOAP is complete, and those two applicants have positions with a binding commitment. If both offers are rejected or expire, the program's positions will be offered to the next two applicants on the preference list, at the beginning of the next SOAP round. If in our example, one position is accepted and the second is declined, then the program will have one offer that will go out to the next applicant on their preference list, but not until the next round. We only send as many offers as there are positions in each round, so offers do not roll to the next applicant during a round. All offers are sent out at the beginning of the round. Rejected offers will not be made again to the same applicant, so think carefully about rejecting any offers you receive. And again, program positions that are rejected by applicants will not be issued to other potential candidates until the start of the next offer round. The list of unfilled programs will be updated in the R3 system for SOAP eligible applicants after the completion of the round. Let's take a look in R3 so you can see where to view any offers. After you click on the SOAP menu option and then select Offers, You'll see a banner telling you the status of the round and if all offers have been generated. Please ignore the date and time on this sample banner on my slide. It's a screenshot from SOAP test and doesn't reflect the dates and times for this year's SOAP rounds. This is an example screen of an applicant who does not have any offers. Let's take a look at one who did get offers. There is a different banner if you have offers, 
and your offers will be under the Pending Offers tab. You can see in our example that this applicant has two pending offers. You can see the institution, specialty, NRMP program code, and ACGME code. You can then click on the offer to view the offer details and either accept or reject the offer or return to the offers page. You will need to enter your NRMP password to accept an offer, so make sure you know your password and don't have it saved only in your browser. Any offers that are rejected or allowed to expire will not be re-offered to the same applicant. Once you've accepted an offer, you'll see the offers under your Accepted Offers tab, and your accepted SO position is going to also appear on your SOAP home, on your sorry, your match homepage. You will not receive a match day email with your SOAP position from the NRMP since you already have your SOAP position information. After the four rounds, SOAP will officially conclude at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, March 14th, with the release of the dynamic list of unfilled programs. The list is not re released right after the round as it was previously. We have to take some time to update it with the programs who chose not to participate in SOAP, so the list won't be made available right away. It will appear on your top menu bar starting at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in a sec. The list of unfilled programs is also dynamic, so programs can update the number of remaining unfilled positions as necessary, so as they're filled. Once the list is released at 9, the communication rules are lifted and applicants can begin contacting programs and applying to remaining unfilled programs, usually through ARIS. As I mentioned, the list of unfilled programs available after SOAP is in a different place on the site, so let's take a look. Once SOAP is concluded, you'll not access the list under the SOAP menu, but rather through the unfilled list link in orange at the top of the screen. Again, this orange link will not appear to you until 9 p.m., so don't worry if you don't see it right after SOAP concludes. Again, we're updating it with that list of programs that chose not to participate in SOAP. This match homepage is also where, if you matched, the results of where you matched will be released on Friday, March 15th at 12 p.m. Eastern Time in the R3 system and by email, or your school may have match ceremonies. If you matched, your matched message with your match results will be updated in the yellow box on Friday. So those are the basics of SOAP and how it's going to work in the NRP and ARIS systems. Next, I wanted to transition into providing you some match and SOAP data from last year. In the 2023 main residency match, 42,952 active applicants vied for 40,375 positions. USMD seniors comprised 19,748 of the active applicants, but that's actually 154 fewer than in 2022. For 2023, PGY1 match rates increased across the board for almost all applicant types, except prior USMD and DO graduates. You can see the PGY1 match rates graphed here by applicant type since 2010. As always, USMD seniors did extremely well in the match. 93.7% of USMD seniors matched to PGY1 positions, and that's a slight increase over 2022, and within the historical 92-95% to 95 rate, which has been consistent for almost 40 years. Other applicant types also fared well in 2023. 91.6% of USDO seniors matched, a slight increase from 91.3%. 67.6% of USIMGs matched, an increase of 6.2 percentage points. And 59.4% of non-US citizen IMGs matched, up 1.3 percentage points from 2022. Prior MD and DO grads both saw a downturn in their match rates, with 48% of prior MD grads matching, a decrease of 2.5 percentage points, and 47.9% of DO grads matched, a decrease from 53.6 the year prior. The overall PGY1 match rate was 81.1% in 2023. This slide shows the numbers and types of unfilled positions for the past 10 years. After the algorithm was processed in 2023, 2,685 of the 40,375 positions were unfilled. That's 423 more positions unfilled than in 2022. But there were 1,170 more positions overall in the match in 2023, and with only 403 more active applicants. In looking at the types of positions that remained unfilled, 915, or 34%, were preliminary PGY1 positions. Those are positions usually in internal medicine, surgery, or transitional year programs that only provide one year preliminary training. This is a slight decrease since 2022 when 39.4% of the unfilled positions were preliminary positions. 
Much of the increase in unfilled categorical positions was due to unfilled positions in emergency medicine. The red bars on this slide show the specialty preferences of all unmatched applicants in 2023. Most unmatched applicants preferred internal medicine, family medicine, general surgery, and psychiatry. The added green bars show the number of available positions in SOAP by specialty. Prelim position numbers available in SOAP included 568 preliminary surgery, 144 preliminary medicine, and 217 transitional year positions. Other specialties with large numbers of positions in SOAP were family medicine, 581, emergency medicine, 545, internal medicine, 378, and pediatrics with 81. Vying for the 2,658 total SOAP positions in 2023 were 12,365 eligible applicants. And that is 471 fewer than in 2022 with 396 more available positions. There were four SOAP offer rounds in 2023. This slide shows the number of positions offered and accepted by round. As you can see, 1,360 of the 2,658 SOAP positions, or 51% of the positions, were accepted in the first offer round. The yellow indicates the number of positions that were rejected in each round. Keep in mind, as I said earlier, applicants can receive more than one offer in a round, and once they accept a position, all offers of the same type are automatically rejected. There were 636 offers accepted in the second round, so 75% of positions were filled by the second round. 334 offers were accepted in the third, and 101 in the fourth round leaving 227 SOAP positions remaining unfilled at the conclusion of the final round. By the conclusion of SOAP, 91% of the available SOAP positions had been filled. The match and SOAP processes combined give us an overall position fill rate for 2023 of 99.1%. And what was left at the conclusion of SOAP? There were 133 SOAP participating programs with 227 positions unfilled at the conclusion of SOAP. This shows the number of positions in SOAP by specialty. And this is the number of positions remaining in those specialties after SOAP concluded. As you can see, the bulk of positions remaining after SOAP concluded were in surgery programs, but primarily PGY-1 surgery positions, family medicine, internal medicine, transitional year, and emergency medicine. Here is the breakdown of the positions accepted by applicant and position type. The numbers in, above in blue indicate the number of SOAP eligible applicants for each applicant type. As you can see, the bulk of the positions were accepted by MD seniors. MD seniors accepted 38%, or 927, of the 2,431 positions filled during SOAP. USDO seniors accepted 22%, or 544 positions. International medical graduates as a group accepted 28%, or 682 of the 2,431 positions filled, up from 22% in 2022. Finally, here are both the match rate and placement rates for all applicant types in 2023. InterMP has traditionally released only the PGY1 match rate, which is the percentage of app of applicants, those who submitted rank order list, who matched to a PGY1 position when the algorithm was run. That's the yellow bars. After the 2023 match, we released for the first time placement rate metrics, which take into account the results of SOAP. The first of the two new metrics we released is the placement rate for all applicants, shown in the lighter teal bars. This, is, this rate is the percentage of all applicants who either matched to a PGY-1 position in the algorithm or accepted a PGY-1 position in SOAP, regardless of whether they submitted a rank order list, which is kind of a proxy for whether an applicant got any interviews. The second placement rate metric we released in darker teal is the placement rate for active applicants. This rate is the percentage of active applicants, again, those who submitted a rank order list, and who matched to a PGY-1 position when the algorithm was run or accepted an offer in SOAP. As you can see, the placement rate for active applicants was highest for all applicant types. For IMG applicants, 
the placement rate for all applicants was lowest. There is other match data that's available on the NRMP website at www.nrmp.org, and I would encourage you to take a look at it. In addition, there are numerous support resources to assist you with Match Week and SOAP. We have explainer videos on SOAP and policies, as well as support guides that will walk you through step-by-step -step on viewing the unfilled programs list and viewing and responding to SOAP offers if you need another refresher. Take some time to familiarize yourself so you're prepared if you don't match. I'm gonna turn things back over to Laurel to wrap up and begin the question and answer portion of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Jeanette. And now we will move into our Q&A portion of today's webinar. And I will like to remind everyone to please submit your questions in the Q&A panel. And this session will also be recorded and will be shared with all participants. And let me see here. Let's go to the first question. So for our first question, it's for the NRMP. And the question reads, if a medical student matches into a transitional year program but is partially unmatched, are they allowed to apply to programs during SOAP? If so, which programs are they eligible to apply to? Categorical or only advanced programs? Thanks, Laurel. If a medical student matches into that transitional year program, that does mean that they're partially unmatched, right? So they do not have a full course of training. So they are only allowed to apply to programs in SOAP for advanced positions. So because they already have a PGY1 commitment, um, they can only apply during SOAP to, um, to advanced positions that begin in the PGY2 um, in the year after the match. So that's all they'll be able to, um, eligible to apply for and, and be able to receive offers in uh, during SOAP. So they cannot apply to categorical positions. Thank you, Jeanette. And for our next question, it's a question for Eris. And it reads, do I need to re-download LORs, which I use during the regular match or the regular season? And for this question, you don't need to re-upload any of your letters of recommendations if they are already uploaded in the document section in your My Eris portal, you can go ahead and assign those to any additional programs you apply to during SOAP. So again, you won't need to re-upload any letters that are already in your My Eris portal. And we have another question for the NRMP. If I got only, if I received only one interview for transitional year program, and my ROL has only one transitional year program. If I get matched in that transitional year, is it considered partially matched? Yeah, so similar to the previous question, that's exactly right. So someone who only matches to a transitional year or preliminary year program is considered um, partially matched. And so again, the only thing they would be able to apply for and receive offers for in SOAP is an advanced position. Thank you, Jeanette. And we have one more question here. Is it likely for someone to get an offer on Thursday, the 14th, despite not getting a telephone interview from any programs in the days prior? Um, it's, it's certainly happened, but it's not super likely. For the most part, programs will reach out directly to applicants in whom they're interested, either via email or phone, and at least have a conversation with them. Um, but really, in the end, it's up to the programs how they do this. And as I mentioned during the presentation, not all programs are prepared to soap, right? So sometimes they, um, just like applicants, are scrambling trying to figure out kind of how this process is going to work for them. So, you know, we can't definitively say that you won't get an offer despite, you know, it, it, despite not getting a, a phone call, but um, it's not very likely in the experience. Uh, most applicants do have some sort of contact from the programs and some sort of conversation before they receive offers during soap. Thank you. And for the next question, we have a question for Eris also about LORs. And the question asks, if I initially waived my right to see my LOR, how will I be able to send my LOR to participating programs? Can I assign my LOR through Eris? And the answer is similar to the previous question. Yes, you can, your, you can assign your LOR through the My Eris portal. You would just go into your 
document section, click your letters of recommendations, and assign them to any saved programs. And let's move on to the next question. And here the question reads, can I apply for 45 positions total or 45 per specialties? So applicants will have 45 applications that they can send out to programs across specialties. So it's not 45 per specialties, it's 45 total for the SOAP process. And here's a question for the NRMP. Say an applicant who's fully unmatched, can they apply and match into both preliminary and transitional year and advanced programs? Yes, absolutely. So if you're fully unmatched, you can apply to, you know, you can use your 45 applications across, you know, preliminary and transitional year and advanced programs, and you can, um, you know, receive offers in both um, a preliminary year uh, and an advanced program. So you can receive off multiple offers and you can accept multiple offers of different kinds of programs, right? So you can't accept two preliminary programs, right? Because it's a match commitment, it's a commitment. And so you can only accept offers, uh, multiple offers of different kinds of programs. But yes, you can apply to both um, preliminary and transitional year as well as advanced programs um, if you're fully unmatched and try and receive those positions, um, offers for those positions during SOAP. And we have another NRMP question. Can you explain what actually, what the meaning of partial match is? Sure, we've kind of uh, hit on this a couple of times. So a partial match is um, if you have applied to um, both preliminary and advanced positions, uh, but only match to one type or the other, you are considered partially matched, right? So you've either matched to a preliminary, but not to an advanced or matched to an advanced and not a preliminary. For those of you who only applied and ranked categorical programs, um, you won't ever be partially matched, right? You have to have applied to um, and ranked, you know, both um, a preliminary year or, or a um, transitional year or an advanced program. Or if you only applied and ranked like one of those types, a transitional year, preliminary or an advanced, then those are the cases where you would be partially matched. But if you only applied to um, categorical positions, you only ranked categorical positions in the match and you don't match, then you would be fully unmatched, not partially unmatched. Thank you, Jeanette. And for our next two questions, they will be for Eris. And the first question reads, will you be able to upload a new personal statement in my Eris even if your application was certified during the regular season? And for that, the answer is yes. So applicants will be able to upload any new documents. Just keep in mind that if you, once you apply to a program and assign those documents to an applied program, you won't be able to unassign them. But yes, you can upload new personal statements and new documents. And the second question reads, can we add new experiences in ARIS during SOAP? So if you are initially filling out your My ARIS application, you can add experiences if you haven't certified and submitted your application. But once you certify and submit your application, you won't be able to update your My ARIS application with the exception of the personal information section. And let's see here, we have another ARIS, pro ARIS question. Do programs see the exact time that an applicant applied on Monday the 11th? So programs will not see the exact time applicants apply on Monday. It's similar, it helps to think of it like during the regular season when programs gain access to your application, they would see the date stamp on the day that they gain access to it. So for example, programs receive your application on Tuesday at 8 a.m. They're able to access it. So all of your applications sent from prior would be date stamped that Tuesday. So even if you applied on 
11 a.m. or 12 p.m. or 4 p.m. on Monday the 11th, programs would just see the date stamp for that Tuesday, the 12th. And let's see here. Our next question is for the NRMP. What are those CMP that appears next to internal medicine in the list of unfilled programs? Thanks, Laurel. Those are program types. So a C is for a categorical program. Categorical programs are programs that begin in the PGY1 year that provide a full course of training. Um, M programs are actually primary care. So they're um, in internal medicine or pediatrics. And the focus of training is primary care, but they are also categorical positions. So they're PGY1, they begin in the PGY1 year and offer a full course of training. And then P is the preliminary uh, year program type. And those are um, PGY1 positions, but that are only one year long. So they're preliminary positions and they're usually um, preliminary positions in internal medicine or general surgery. And they serve as a preliminary year of training uh, prior to going into an advanced position. Thank you, Jeanette. And here we have a question for Eris. And it states, since there are 45 SOAP applications, does that include the programs I apply to during the regular season? So that the 45 applications, it does not include programs you apply to before SOAP. Those 45 applications are for you to expend during the SOAP process. And our next question is similar and it is for the NRMP. And it reads, we can apply to a maximum of 45 programs, but if we had applied to the same program in match, can we apply again in SOAP? Yeah, that's that's kind of a both of us question, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I mean, if yeah, if you apply to the same program in in the main match, you can absolutely apply in SOAP. It's really up to the program whether or not they are interested in taking a look at you during SOAP. But yeah, you're certainly welcome to apply to the same program if they remained unfilled uh, and are participating in SOAP. And to add on to Jeanette's answer, there is a section in my ERIS when you can go to your reapply programs. And from there, you can go ahead and reapply to that program. But do keep in mind that if you reapply to a program, that will take away from your 45 applications. And here is another question for Eris. If the program wants to request an updated transcript, is there an additional fee? So for this question, I believe it's talking about any testing transcripts. So if you have a NBME transcript that needs to be updated, you would be able to do so through the MyEras portal and you can just go ahead and click that resend button. But if you are applying to a new program, the transcript would be the updated transcript at the time of submission to the NBME. So yes, you can update the transcript and no, there is no additional fee once you pay that $80. And next is a question for the NRMP. Can you apply to specialties not originally applied to during regular match? Yeah, absolutely. You can apply to, um, you know, again, any of the unfilled positions um, available through SOAP for which you are eligible. So um, SOAP is, you know, specialty agnostic in the sense that, you you know, you can kind of choose uh, what specialties you're interested. Um, you know, if you've applied to, you know, a particularly competitive specialty during the regular season, there may or may not be open positions uh, in your originally applied to specialty. So certainly you are uh, welcome to apply to, to, to other specialties as a part of the SOAP process. Thanks, Jeanette. Our next question, it's about program signals. So the question reads, can we signal programs during SOAP? So program signals are not available during SOAP. You will not be able to signal any programs you apply to. And we have another question here. Can you edit your personal information? For example, your phone number, email, during ERIS. 
So for this, you are able to edit your personal, the personal information section of your My Eris application, and that section would include your email and your phone number. And here we have another one. Can you apply to additional SOAP programs other than the original 45 selected between SOAP offer rounds on March 14th? So for this question, your 45 applications, they are available to you throughout the entire SOAP process. So you can apply to programs throughout the SOAP process with the exceptions of rounds one through three. And here we have an NRMP question. Programs that don't participate in SOAP and have unfilled spots how will we be able to access those programs? So for programs that, that are not participating in SOAP but still have unfilled positions, because um, programs can choose whether or not um, they are intending to participate in SOAP, what will happen is, um, and I think we showed this in the presentation, at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday the 14th, after the conclusion of SOAP, um, the, the final SOAP round ends at 8. Um, the reason it takes us a little bit is because we do um, take the what remains in SOAP, and then we add in the unfilled programs that chose not to participate in SOAP to a final list of unfilled programs. And so we release that list, that final list of unfilled programs at 9 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday the 14th. That will be in the NRMP system, but I think as I showed on the screens, it will be in a different place. It will be an orange kind of icon up at the top of the screen. It'll say unfilled list on it. And that will be the final list of unfilled um, programs that includes both of those that remained at the conclusion of SOAP, still unfilled, and then any um, unfilled programs that chose not to participate in SOAP. That list will not have any additional positions added to it. Um, the only positions that uh, will be on that list are ones that either that participated in the match. So there's no not going to be any new positions added to that list. We get that question um, a lot every year. So I figured I'd just hit it now. Um, so, but it is a dynamic list and programs can remove positions as they're filled or they choose not to fill them. So that list will be dynamic and can be checked um, until May 1st, actually, that, that, that um, list will stay up and be able to be edited um, to remove positions by the programs. And this question is a follow-up question and it reads, how does someone apply to those post soap and filled programs so it kind of both of us question yeah. um, the the interim p uh, it's it's really up to the programs as far as the interim p but um but most of them i believe will use eris but, but laurel you may want to mm -hmm. so for um the eris portion jeanette already mentioned where you would find the list of unfilled programs so once you know which programs you would like to apply to then you can go into my eris and apply per usual as you did during the regular season. And here we have a question about different tracks. Let me see here. Yeah, that one's mine. I can I can interpret it if that's helpful. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Um, so it's a, it's a question about kind of advanced versus prelim a little bit, but in, in terms of, you know, how can we find out the location? So if we match to an advanced program, but not a preliminary program, will we know where we match for the advance? Um, and the answer is yes. So in your, in your match results, you'll be able to see if you're partially matched the city, state, and zip code of your matched program so that you can try to um, get a kind of a geographically complementary position um, in SOAP. So you will see that information, but again, only if you're partially matched. Um, and then yes, if you've only matched, the other part of the question was, if we match to an advanced program, will we have only preliminary programs available for us to apply? Yes, that is correct. If you've matched to an advanced, you have a binding commitment to an advanced position. And so you would only be able to apply for preliminary uh, programs during SOAP. Thank you, Jeanette. And our next question is about the 45 applications. And I can answer this one. Are there 45 applications 
to submit for round one or are they good for all four rounds? So the question is basically asking if the 45 application limit is only applicable to round one, but the 45 applications are available to applicants for the entire SOAP process and not just after the rounds, because please keep in mind that you can't apply during round one, one two, and three. And we have a question here. Can we accept multiple offers? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, you can accept multiple offers of different program types. So if you accept a categorical offer, no, you cannot accept multiple offers, right? Because accepting an offer makes a binding commitment. Um, but if you get a preliminary year offer and an advanced um, position offer, then yes, you can accept both of those offers because they are um, different program types and it will allow you to have a full course of training. So you can accept multiple offers of different program types that are complementary. Thank you, Jeanette. And we have another question for you. This may have already been answered, but it reads, should we spread out the 45 applications applied to throughout the four SOAP rounds? So really in the end, this is ultimately up to the applicant, but um, as we showed during the presentation, the majority of positions are filled in the first round, um, somewhere around 40%, I believe, um, were filled in the first round, but 75% were filled by round two. So if you're holding on to applications um, to try and apply um, in between rounds, um, it may not be the best strategy simply because so many positions um, are already filled uh, during those first rounds. Uh, but ultimately, it's up to you as the applicant how you want to do that um, and whether or not you should you want to spread out those applications. But the data show uh, that the majority of positions fill very quickly in those rounds. And it is questionable whether programs will go back to the well um, to try and get more applicants for, for subsequent rounds. And we have another one. Do all programs conduct interviews? Um, again, for the most part, uh, they will either conduct interviews or they will at least have short phone calls. I mean, and some of them may be just impromptu kind of phone call interview situations, um, but for the most part, they will have at least a conversation. Um, so for the, the majority of them, either conduct, conduct interviews or um, do do some sort of phone call conversation. Thank you, Jeanette. And here we have a question that I can take. It's about applying to unfilled programs after SOAP. Someone just wanted more explanation for that question. So for applying to unfilled programs after SOAP, you would log into My Eris. You'd be able to search for any programs that you would like to apply to. From there, you can apply to the program, assign any documents and transcripts, as well as personal information. Sorry, not your personal information, your personal statements, and kind of apply regularly as you did during the normal era season. And you would have that availability and option after SOAP. And let's see here. Once you accept a position, are you in the program for sure? Or do you have to wait to interview with them and wait till they assess you again? Um, so if you were accepting a position through the R3 system during SOAP, which is the only way to accept positions um, during SOAP, then it is a binding commitment for both the program and the applicant. So once you accept that position, you are in the program for sure. There is no additional interview. There is no additional assessment. They have a match. They have a commitment um, to you and you to them. It, it is a binding binding commitment similar to the actual matching process. But this is, you know, kind of a we keep the binding commitment or during this supplemental process. And we have another question here. How do programs make their preference lists? Is it just based on your application or do they talk to you first and then they make their list? 
Yeah, um, they, for the most part, they will talk to you first uh, before making their list. Um, again, you know, it's it's up to the programs and, you know, there are different programs every year in SOAP. So um, so it's, it's really up to the individual programs, but for the most part, they talk to you first. And we have another question here. Is the number of eligible SOAP applicants the same as actual number of people applying during SOAP? No, I mean, last year there were what, a little over 12,000 eligible SOAP applicants and um, our assumption is that, that not all of those folks will apply to positions. Uh, some of them, and I think I shared this during the presentation, there is an off-ramp of SOAP if you want to go um, for a non-clinical like research position. So those folks would certainly not be applying for positions during SOAP. Um, and then there may be others who look at that list of unfilled programs and see, okay, well, there's nothing here that I'm interested in that I want to do. So they um, certainly don't have to apply um, to positions during SOAP. So that eligible SOAP applicants is kind of the max number. Um, and then what individual applicants decide to do is really up to them. Thank you, Jeanette. And someone would like to know when the NRMP is down until. The NRMP is not down. We do not go down this time of, I mean, we will in the evenings, but we do not go down during soap. There will be no, in theory, downtime um, <laughs> during soap. Um, they may have been asking about the heiress being, because I know you all close mm -hmm. in, on the Monday um, in the morning. So I don't know if that's what they're referring to, but, um, but NRMP um, should not be down uh, during match week at all. And for the heiress side, I can speak on that. Um, heiress would be, my heiress would be down from 7.30 a.m. to 10.59 a.m. Then applicants would be able to access it at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have a question here about documents for my heiress. And it reads, do we need to re-upload LORs, personal statements, and MSPEs if they were already uploaded for the regular ARIS 2024 cycle? So the answer is no, you would not need to re-upload any of these documents. You would still be able to access them through your documents tab, and you would just go ahead and assign those documents to any new programs you apply to. And here's another question. It reads, if an applicant matches into transitional or preliminary year in one specialty in 2024, can they apply for a categorical position the same time or for a different specialty in the next match cycle? Yeah, they can apply for, I mean, if, if you, you know, match and, and complete your transitional or preliminary year, um, in 2024, in the next cycle, you can certainly apply to categorical positions. Um, it's up to the individual programs whether or not they will consider you based on your previous training. Um, and then there are some funding um, implications for, um, you know, for how much, you know, funding you potentially um, may have uh, for for uh, for your residency. So, uh, but it's up to the individual program whether or not they uh, would want to. Uh, would want to consider you um, in the next cycle for a categorical position. Thank you, Jeanette. And we have another question here. Do you need a U.S. phone number for the programs to contact you? So, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Again, you know, so much of this is is really left to the programs. Um, some programs will reach out by email. Some some will only do phone. It's up to the programs whether or not they are interested in making an international call, right? So um, we can't really say one or one way or another. Um, so, I mean, obviously, it would be safest to have a U.S. phone number. Um, but it's really up to the programs what they're willing to do in terms of reaching out and contacting you. Thank you. And we have another question here. Do we have to look at the list of unfilled programs on the NRMP or can we just go straight to ARIS and start applying for SOAP? So the, the list on NRMP is the definitive list of unfilled programs during this process. So it is your best bet 
to log into the interim piece system and review that list of unfilled programs. That list of unfilled programs is organized by specialty um, and you can see by position type and, and it's where you're gonna really get a feel for what's available and what's out there before you go into ARIS and begin applying. Thank you, Jeanette. And I'll go ahead and answer this last question here because we are almost out of time. And the question asked during SOAP, do we need to reassign documents and transcripts again after doing that during the main match season? So if you are applying to a new program, you would need to assign those documents to the program. But if you are reapplying to a program, you will not have to reassign documents, but you can assign more documents. And with that, that does conclude today's webinar, and I want to thank everyone so much for joining us, and I'll turn it back to Jennifer to close us out. Great. Thanks so much. Um, and please do give us your feedback on today's program by filling out the evaluation that will pop up on your screen as soon as we end. We recorded this session, and we'll email you when we post the archive. On behalf of the Association of American Medical Colleges, thank you to our presenters and all of you for joining. Have a wonderful day.